so welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look inside Gloomhaven. And this is designed by Isaac Childress, and it's from Cephalofair Games, or Cephalofair Games, I guess. And this is one of a few games that he's put out. I know this was kind of a startup company by himself, um, and Gloomhaven is kind of the pinnacle of that. And as you can see, this box is colossal in size. Now this is the second printing. This was put on Kickstarter um, in the summer of 2017 and it's now um, mid-November is when it got, um, I just got it today. Um, the game is massive. The only, so there's a few different bits and pieces in this from the first edition that are revised or there's some additions that were add-ons from before that they've included in. So. Um, I can't comment exactly on what was in the first edition because I've not played it, but we're just going to go with what's in here. Um, this, the box weighs over nine and a half kilos. The thing is massive, as you can tell. Just get a look at this. Like it's almost as deep as it is wide. I mean, it's crazy. So we're going to just crack it open and get going. I, the only thing I did, this didn't have any shrink, because I presume the box was too big to go in a shrink wrap machine. It had, if I can get this off, well, it was very tall. It had kind of like the, the little sticker, like the clear plastic stickers you would see on each of the corners. So I cut those off before I shot this just to get ahead in the game, because I want to be turning the box up and down. So as you can see, as big as this box is, it is chock full to the top. The only extra thing that I got that was an add-on from the second printing was actually this, the solo scenarios. Because I will primarily, most likely, be playing this a lot of solitaire. So I'm just going to flick through because I don't want any spoilers. But this is a good... Let me just off-camera take a little look. Well, it doesn't really necessarily have a... I think it's 22. 3... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 or 18 solo only scenarios in this. And it says here that you can't start these until a very certain point. So um, we'll kind of dig those out later. We have the rule book. So you can watch the rules online if you want to, but I'm a, I like to read them and see it myself as well. There's a lot of rules. This is a 50, 52 page rule book. All the iconography is on the back, so that's nice. All the different cards and what they are, because there's a lot of different cards in this game. Um, but yeah, whilst there is a lot of text and it's a big rule book, a lot of pictures, diagrams, so this will be fairly simple to digest. And I know there's a lot of different phases to the game. Like you'll go adventuring and it's a tactical dungeon crawl, but there's also story aspects and there's a legacy style element as well. There's a lot of stuff here. This is what I can only presume is, yep, the scenario booklet. And this thing, what well, I'm gonna, ooh, 121 pages in this. Oh my gosh. And looking at this, there are 95 scenarios. Just looking at the numbers at the top. I mean, this is massive. There's just gonna be endless game in here, which is very exciting. Looks like we have the player board, so a big board here. Let's see. This is a very nice mounted board. Oh, so this is the map. This is kind of a campaign map. Oof, let's get this out. And looking at this, first off, beautiful map. It's reminiscent of a lot of old Dungeons and Dragons maps and kind of Tolkien-esque as well. So this is beautiful, hard mounted board. Love that. So down here there's a, oh, let's get this in shot. There's a prosperity track to track the prosperity of Gloomhaven, which will grow over time. So you've got, this is a Gloomhaven in the middle, and there's a blow up of the city over here. At the top, you've got um, kind of cutouts for different achievements. I, per, I don't know if those give you bonuses or if that's just, hey cool, you did a thing. I have no idea. There's a box down here with a cutout for something, but no label, so who knows. What I do know is this is this is a grid, and eventually you'll be putting out locations, and those are actually kind of what's next here in the box. So let me get see if any of that. So it's kind of spoilerific here. There's a bunch of different location stickers which have numbers, and presumably as you discover those through the campaign and the order with which you do that, 
you'll be putting them out in various different geographical locations. I would like to think that that's different for every game based on which order you do the missions, maybe? But I, I don't know. I don't know if it's kind of linear and everyone will have the same map at the end, or if based on side quests, when you do them, that might look different. Who knows? So let's kind of set that aside. So that was these stickers. That was the location stickers. Ah, so these are these are those global achievement stickers that were across the top of the board. So there's a bunch of those different things. Which seems to... I don't know if these actually provide a benefit in-game, but it's like, you did a thing, like one of these is the Drake slain. I don't know who the Drake is, but apparently you can kill him, and you get an award for doing so, so that's pretty cool. Nice to have a little, you know, aspects of that to bring legacy into normal board games. So, this is the important part. I don't know if I can even get these all out at once. Here's the, here's the cardboard. I mean, this is just crazy how much there is. This is potential. This is more cardboard. Let's set this aside. This is more cardboard than there was in Space Hulk, which had an ungodly amount of cardboard in it. And TI3 also had a ton of cardboard too. So let's just, we'll pick, pull up one of the punch boards here. This is obviously a very large piece of dungeon tile. And these are very typical dungeon tiles in the sense that you've got the geomorphic parts on them as puzzle pieces to put them together. And this is a hex based dungeon, so that's nice. It's not squares, just something different. But the artwork on them is fantastic. It's great. Very lively, very stylized. I played a few dungeon crawlers in my time where the boards were just kind of almost an afterthought. But this is great. These look fantastic. Let me just pull up a couple more of them. Just the details. So you've got this broken hammer up here. A little treasure ch or a shield, I guess. Just good detail on the boards themselves. Hey, look, there's some kind of vials and some crystals. And we'll flip it over and you've got broken arrows. And just neat detail just to liven up the board. So that's really cool. And we'll go back to this punch board. Looks like we've got standees for a lot of the enemies. And just... As a reference, I've got some, and I have no idea what any of this stuff is, because I know a lot of the stuff is um, unique, and this isn't your typical Tolkien-esque fantasy with orcs, goblins, and dwarves, and all that kind of stuff. Everything is kind of new. So I'm looking at here, you got some flaming demon-looking guy, shadowy dude with a knife, some kind of lizard man thing, who knows? This is a mushroom crab scorpion thing. This looks awesome. And a big golem, it looks like. Who doesn't want to fight all this kind of stuff? And then it looks like you've got these. Look like they're probably hex overlays for the board. So you'd have a, whatever that is. A bench? Or a grill or something? I don't actually know what they're supposed to be. But then barrels. Here you got some woods. Some, some kind of... Looks like Merkwood type woods there that are going to be entrapping you. There's a bunch of different of those to go over the board. Looks like you got a, a bear trap here. A pit of spikes. Oh, that's cool. Be using that in regular D&D. But there's a, just a, I, I mean, this is more cardboard than I know what to do with. I'm going to spend an age punching all of this. I mean, this is all the same stuff. So this big old board, this board's even bigger. I mean, you could feasibly... Once you're done playing the campaign, if that ever happens, I know there's a ton of fan creation. You have unlimited creativity with how much is in here. But, I mean, that's the reality of it. Just more, more... Presumably these are all the bad guys, right? Just such cool-looking characters. Different life in them. I think that's really neat. This is a little... Ne I like this. I just think this is cool. Just a V-shaped kind of dungeon. Just something different from... Kind of, here's a square with a corridor, square, corridor, square, corridor, which is a lot of what dungeon crawlers end up looking like, like Descent and Imperial Assault. This, you just, they, they just went the extra mile just to make it a bit different. And I think having a hex-based board allows you to do that. Okay, I don't know. This might be some form of battle board, maybe? I don't know. It has a, uh, a round marker and you have inert, waning, and strong. Maybe that's a magic system. I guess we'll find out. I'll set that aside. Look at these big... So there's a round track. Yeah, that's... But look at this big dragon. That's just so cool looking. Presumably we'll just be fighting all of these. And these are little standees. I think somewhere in the box there's a big old box of standees. 
it's just so much. This, I mean, it, of all this cardboard, there's, there's just so much in here. And that's part of the reason why I backed this game, is because A, the reviews are extremely good, and B, you just get so much there. This is so much game. And if you play it slowly over a lifetime, yeah, I think that's great. So we have these smaller tokens here, these squares, probably these are different ability markers or conditions, things like that. There's a touch, just a touch, so that's all the, I mean, I don't even know how I'm going to store all of this. I honestly don't. I'm going to have to punch it all and then cry myself to sleep with what to actually do with everything. So let's take a look at what else we have in here. And I will try my best to keep everything spoiler free, which I think is fairly simple. Because I think the stuff that would be spoilerific are in these envelopes. So we're not going to open those, but eventually at some point the campaign's going to say, Hey, open envelope X and who knows what might happen. Or A and B, same thing. No idea. So you have a pad of these party sheets. Looks like there's maybe ten of these, maybe. So you have your whole party, your name, location, notes, achievements. You have your reputation marker and then your shop price modifier. So, you know, if you do bad things, you... Well, if you do bad things, it's going to be more expensive to buy stuff in town. If you do good things, have good rep, you might get better prices. People are more willing to sell to you because you're a hero. This looks like some kind of decoder. So great, there's going to be a puzzle in there. These are more stickers. These are enhancement stickers. So we saw those tokens, and those are probably temporary in-game ones, and these have become permanent ones probably on your character sheet. And then there's town records. Who knows? I don't know what this is, because it is sealed up on the side. So I'm not going to look through that, because that's got a good number of pages in there. Who knows what might happen with that. I have no idea if that's some kind of progression thing, or if those are just... I don't know. I'm excited though. So we got some foam in here just to keep everything separate, so that's nice. Okay. So we have these are... Uh, so there's four health trackers. And I think these might be a new thing. I think these are new in the second edition. I know there was a lot of different... I, I, think, these are, I think these are new in here. So that's cool. Always a big fan of health trackers. And... So you got four of those. This can play up to four, so that's nice. Those are good quality, and they're pre-assembled, so I don't have to make those myself. That's great. So, all right, let me... Some of these are kind of in here a little bit awkwardly, and we're going to take a look at these. More foam. More foam. All right, so I'm just going to kind of tip this so you can see what's in here. These are all character boxes. These are all fully playable characters. And you'll start by doing just the first few, and because the, these are like the almost entry level characters, so to speak. Let's put these in here so we can see. And then eventually they will retire and you'll move open new ones and you just progress through the entire story, not with necessarily the same one for 90 games, because you would get bored of that. So that's neat. There's just a ton of stuff in here. And each of these are the little miniatures for them. So and I don't know if I want to open those up on camera. I kind of do. I might just open one of them. Just to see. I will do it off screen, just in case. I just want to see the quality of the miniatures. And they are good. They are, um, this is kind of a... I don't think... Well... I don't know if I want to spoil that. Let me just take a little break and make sure. Okay. Glad I didn't show you that one, because that is one of the um, later game heroes. So this is not spoilerific, because this guy is on the front of the box. I just didn't know what the symbols corresponded to each one. So this is one of the plastic miniatures that comes, um, that came with the game. So let's get him in focus. The detail on the miniatures is actually pretty good. I'm very happy with those. There's some mold lines, as you can see, kind of on his, um, on his horns there, but the reality is, for a board game, these are excellent miniatures. Will I paint them over time? Sure. This is, oops, this is really um, kind of dense plastic, so that's actually really nice. It has a good weight to it, and it doesn't, that's not very bendable in any way, shape, or form. 
So that's going to stand up well to the test of time. But what a cool, unique looking miniature. And I presume the rest of these are like that, but I will not be opening those. I have learned my lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and put him back in the box. And his box, so each of these are a sleeve. And in here is chock full of... He has a little kind of a... His name, this is the character sheet for him. And as you can tell, he has a bunch of different ones. So you can play it over and over. He has a, a player board. So you got some great flavor text there. Fantastic artwork, by the way. All of his different trackers down there. And I do wonder if that's the same thing as this. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. What else is in here? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff, I believe. So we have, let me just make sure. So we have some little tokens unique for him. And then I think these are battle cards. And then you have a deck as well. And I put that rule book away foolishly because I don't know what exactly what all of those are. So that's, and each one of these boxes has all of that stuff in. I mean, there's just that's volumetrically so much in this game. There's a ton of different cards here. So many cards. So you have, a, this is a, the, I think this is your combat deck, which will have various numbers and different pieces. These are the monster cards. So this is just a, a bandit commander. And they have different levels to them. And you'll turn it based on kind of what level he is and the difficulty he's at and kind of where he's at. These are sealed. Oh, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's these guys will slide in here. And that'll let you so you'll only be able to see this part of it. And then they have a health tracker on here as well. These are the plastic standees. For the four. These guys, let's just punch one of these guys out and we'll see how he fits in here. Oh, it's quite tight. That's very tight. Doesn't really go down all the way, but it doesn't have to because that's very secure in it. Like I'm having a hard time pulling it out. So that's pretty much, as, that's how it's going to be, really, because I feel like if I push it in there, I might break the plastic. The plastic's very thick, but I don't want to, I don't want to push my luck, so. That's not bad. I'm very happy with those. Standees are great. You have some little wooden counters. And just so, just so many cards. So we have items here. Boots of Striding. So it looks like you've got a cost. A little ability. Wear them on your feet. I don't even know where to start with all these cards, honestly. We already got those out. So we got some... And you probably, these are divided up into... Those, into, like, how good they are. So you got red ones and blue ones. And each of these are numbered on here. So you'll have some construction, presumably, of which items will be available. I think some backstory type cards. I mean, that's just... I'm kind of lost, almost, in this game. Fantastic, but uh, I gotta sit down and read the rules to just try and figure out what everything is and how to organize everything. So, I mean, that's kind of a look at what Gloomhaven is. It's just an immense amount of game in a single box. So, I'm very excited to play this. I will definitely be letting you know how it is, how it plays, and I'll keep it all spoiler free, but wow. What a, what a product. I've paid a lot of money for a lot of games. That's not true, but, you know, I'll, I'll fork out for a game if it's good. And the price point on this was something where you had to stop and think, because I think the Kickstarter was like 120 bucks, and that was a lot of money. But I've paid, you know, close to that for some games, and you don't get nearly as much content. Not nearly as much. It, like, physically-wise, this is 22 pounds of goodness. You know, I've, I've paid... Close to $100 for a two-inch box with some counters and a paper mat. And that's fantastic, but this is 
this is kind of mind blowing just how much I have. I'm almost a little bit intimidated, but I'll crunch through it and I'll let you know how it is. I'm hoping it's as great as everyone thinks that it is, and I'll watch out for a review coming soon. And I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.